I'm not usually a big fan of the U.S. Commission for International Religious Freedom. I know that sounds bad on its face, but this is a government department that sprang into existence in the late 90s and has mostly been used to promote Christian causes and pander to Christian voters. But sometimes it does good stuff too, which was the case this week when it urged for a commission of inquiry at the UN to look into Iran's brutal suppression of the current anti-Hajib protest, still ablaze in their country. Hell, the protest has gotten so big now, the government is deeming it a rebellion. We've been talking about these protests for a while now, and as I mentioned last week, the government's tactics have grown increasingly brutal. But it looks like they're not just targeting the protesters. It's looking more and more like they're using the widespread violence to their advantage against other dissidents and religious minorities. But regardless of who they're killing or why, the fact is that they're straight up massacring their citizens over a fucking sexist headscarf. But not all the international news is so dire. I was excited to see a story out of India this week that bodes well for that country's commitment to reproductive rights. See, the Supreme Court in India is a pretty liberal body, far more liberal than the rest of the government, at least. And that's led to a situation where even as the nation's leaders are tipping towards more exclusion and conservatism, the laws are tipping more towards liberty. And that was the case again this week when the Supreme Court ruled that abortion was protected up to 24 weeks into a pregnancy. Now, the laws about abortion in India are pretty complicated, and I don't have time to dive too deeply into them. Suffice it to say that something like a third of the abortions in the country leading up to this ruling were done illegally, and there were particularly onerous restrictions on abortion for single women. But abortion is considered to be among the gravest of sins, according to Hindu tradition. So every victory in this department is hard won and worth celebrating. But enough about good news. Let's get back to domestic news. Specifically, I want to highlight the interview 60 Minutes aired on Sunday with the new president of the Southern Baptist Convention. See, the SBC is in a ton of hot water at the moment. We've been reporting on their ongoing sex abuse scandals for a while, but apparently the Justice Department aren't regular listeners, so they are only now hearing about it recently. And the organization's response was so bad that they're double-checking to make sure it wasn't criminal. Well, the SBC's new president is trying to get out ahead of that with a media blitz where his main goal is to demonstrate that however mad you are about this, he's madder. Those old leaders may have ignored and belittled the victims, but those guys are gone, or at least one of them is. And he's on your side. He's appalled at the sexism that was allowed to go on at the organization that he now heads. And to his credit, he did a pretty good job with that early in the interview. But then Anderson Cooper started asking him about abortion, and he reminded us where that sexism comes from. How could someone with his organization possibly think it was okay to belittle women and treat them as a lesser life form? Well, maybe we start with a president who tells a national audience that 10-year-old rape victims should be forced to bear their rapist baby, which is an actual position that he actually staked out before the interview was over. And that's when he was trying to present his empathetic side. So yeah, with that stark reminder of what we're up against, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.